everybody, it's Nick from Allied Electrical. Uh, one of the jobs we do over and over again um, and gets more questions from customers than almost any other uh, job we do is electrical condition reports. So I thought what we would do is um, put together a series of three short videos um, just explaining um, testing condition reports uh, and what to expect. It's quite a dry subject, so I thought we'd break it into three smaller videos. The first video we're going to do uh, in a second, and that will actually explain the types of test certificates, um, the costs for them. Uh, the second video will go into a bit more detail on the actual condition report itself, uh, so you know what to expect um, when the electrician's on site. Uh, and then the third video uh, will look at the resulting certificate and the steps to take um, once you've got the certificate. So. Um, Let's crack on. So firstly, types of certificate. Now, I know we've just said about this being um, condition uh, reports, but I'll just show you the other types of certificates as well, just so that you, if you have any questions with, with regard to those, hopefully this might be of help. So this first one here is a minor work certificate. I apologize, the, the type is, is reversed, unfortunately. It's a bit of a foible of the video. Um, but this is a minor work certificate. Now you would expect to get one of these uh, if you have uh, an amendment done to an existing circuit. Um, as the name suggests, minor works. So if you have minor works carried out that doesn't extend to the installation of a new circuit, uh, a minor work certificate is what you're looking for. A single page, will have, it will have uh, guidance notes on the back as well. Um, so that's that one there. Anything bigger than that, new circuit, new fuse board, rewiring, um, then you'll be looking for an installation certificate. Uh, now, an installation certificate looks very, very similar to one of these. This is actually a condition report, but the installation certificate looks almost identical to it. The only dif difference being with the installation certificate, uh, there is, uh, there's a section on page two of the condition report that says observations and recommendations. And that's where it lists any any deviations from the wiring regulations. Obviously, with a new installation, it's assumed um, that there shouldn't be any deviations from the wiring regulations in the new installation. So that's generally how it differs, but it looks almost exactly the same. Um, so condition reports. So this is domestic electrical condition report. Um, the commercial type, very very similar. Uh, the testing is is the same. Um, but the certificates look very slightly different, uh, they're a bit more in depth. Uh, but this is the domestic type and this domestic one is where we're focusing on mainly for this video. Now, this particular uh, type here, this is a slightly older style one. Uh, this is a 17th edition wiring regulation. Now, as of about two months ago, we've actually changed to the 18th edition. And we've actually got an 18th edition one uh, there. So this is the new style one um, that you will get if you order a condition report from now on. To my eyes, uh, in all honesty, this is actually slightly more difficult to read the new ones. Um, but um, the powers that be have, have deemed uh, us electrical contractors need to use this new layout. So unfortunately, that's what we've got to go with now. Um, so domestic electrical installation condition report. This is also called a number of other things. The two um, most common ones we hear is um, a buyer's report or a buyer's survey, home buyer's survey, uh, or a landlord's report. Uh, so landlord's report, home buyer's survey, electrical condition report is all one and the same thing. They're all the same certificate. Um, the only difference uh, with them is where it says purpose of the report, it will say uh, change of ownership, landlords uh, or whatever scheduled, uh, scheduled inspection. Um, so obviously for, for landlords, you would also, uh, you may well also need other things such as po uh, portable appliance testing, uh, fire alarms um, and emergency lights if it's something like an HMO. Again, we can deal with all of those as well. We do an awful lot of those, um, but for the purpose of this video, we're only gonna look at condition reports for the time being. Um, how often sh should you have this done? So if you're buying a property to live in yourself, so home buyer's report, or if you already live in the property, um, so you already own the home and you just want to know what the condition of it is. Um, it's a maximum of 10 years um, between tests. Obviously, if the installation is, is in a bit of a shaky condition, you may want to do that more frequently. For landlords, where it's a rental property, um, the time scales are different. It's a maximum of uh, five years or change of tenancy. 
Um, you do occasionally find tenants, especially if they've parted on bad ways with the landlord. Um, unfortunately, they do occasionally damage the electrical installation, uh, which is why it's changing tenancy as well. Um, so that's the, the actual test reports and um, the different things they can be called. Cost of carrying out the report. Now, it's a bit of a thorny subject, this one. So, um, costs can vary wildly. Um, the cheapest I've heard of is 60 plus the VAT. Most expensive is up around 400 plus the VAT. And that's for the same uh, test report on the same property. Why the difference in cost? Well, there's three main ways we tend to find that different contractors will price um, condition reports. So the cheaper end of it, um, there's two reasons why they're um, massively cheaper than, than other contractors. Um, and the first reason for that is they're actually not bothering to do the test, they're just turning up, looking at the installation, say, yeah, that's fine, sign it off, give the certificate over. Um, the second way is they will do the condition report artificially low on cost on the basis that they will find sufficient remedials that they can load the price up on the remedials to cover the shortfall of the original condition report. Now, some contractors, um, when they list the observations and recommendations, can be very, very vague with the faults, or they'll just list it as regulations. And what that actually means is it makes it very, very difficult for another, a different contractor to come in and price to do the remedial works. And that's kind of what they, what they count on. Um, the way we tend to do it is um, we will quote the regulation number, but also we will provide um, a very uh, plain English description of what the, what the actual fault is. Um, we tend to find just quoting a regulation at a customer, your installation doesn't comply with regulation 514.3.9 uh, or whatever. Uh, that's no good to anybody. Um, so we tend to, to sort of put the regulation number, but we will also uh, list it in plain English. So that's why the condition report may be particularly cheap. Uh, we have on occasion been passed test reports by um, potential customers where they've had a very, very cheap condition report done and not been satisfied with it understandably, uh, and then paid us to go in and do uh, retest the installation properly. Um, quite why they get us to go in and do it and not the original contractor. I don't know, it's, it's usually a variety of reasons. Either they're not comfortable with uh, the previous contractor, um, you know, I, I don't know what the reasons are, but it does happen. So um, the second way of pricing uh, a condition report is to actually price it what it genuinely costs. Uh, we do it as, a st we personally tend to do it as a standalone job. For the average two, three, four bedroom house, you're looking around about half a day's labour approximately to do uh, a condition report. Um, so that's how we price it. Um, it's about 175-ish plus the VAT, depending on the number of circuits. Uh, if there's quite a lot of circuits, the price can go up a little bit more. Um, and as I say, we'll, we'll provide a, a, an NICIC condition report and a list of any observations, recommendations in plain English. If you want to send that quote, uh, send that certificate out to get other quotes, um, you know that's fine. Um, or alternatively, we can provide you with, with a, uh, a quote to, to do do those things. You then go to the upper end, uh, where somebody is really, really pulling the installation to pieces, um, and it can take anything up to a day. And you'll hopefully see that with the second video when we actually look at. Uh, how we do a condition report. Um, it can take quite a long time. If you have to take light fittings down to do to do tests on them and to verify the wiring behind them is is in good condition, it can take quite a long time to do. And it's not unreasonable to spend an entire day on a on a, a you know on an electrical installation condition report. Uh, but that's why there's the difference. So I would personally say uh, avoid the cheap ones like the plague. They are cheap for a reason. We all price on approximately the same hourly rate. So if one person's saying it's £60, one person's saying it's 175 and one person's saying it's 400 there's, there's a reason why there's a difference. Uh, and the amount of time spent doing it is, is kind of proportional. Um, the other thing I would say is it's quite important to pick a contractor that you're com comfortable with. Um, you know, Potentially it may be uh, there are remedial works to be done uh, on the installation. Um, 
So you want to pick a contractor that not only you trust to do the initial condition report, but also you would be happy doing the, the remedial works as well. Um, one thing it may be worth asking with remedial works is, does the contractor provide um, a breakdown of all the costs uh, rather than just uh, providing the single sort of headline figure? Because they can kind of, uh, that's one way of kind of boosting the, the cost of the remedials up uh, to an artificially high price. Um, so that's uh, basically the um, type certificate, um, the variations on it, um, costs, and uh, what you should expect timescale wise. We can have a little look in the second video um, at do what's actually uh, what the condition report consists of, and we're going to run through a few tests. Um, so uh, check out the next video. Thanks very much for watching.